the derivation of the centripetal acceleration formula. So you, if you're in introductory physics, you see this centripetal acceleration is v squared over r or omega squared r. I'm gonna derive this for you, asterisk, sort of. So it's not a, it's not a full derivation, but it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So first of all, I, you know, be careful, centripetal, don't confuse that with centrifugal. Centripetal means center pointing. Centrifugal means center fleeing, so pointing away. So those are two different things. Um, a lot of people say, hey, stay the heck away from centrifugal force. You're just going to confuse yourself. But both of, these, both of these are a little overrated. That's fine. I mean, this is actually very useful, but calling it, nah, don't worry about it. Okay, so let's imagine that we have an object moving in a circle at a constant velocity, v. So we can define the acceleration, a, is defined as, in a short time interval, as delta v over delta t. It's the rate of change of velocity. But acceleration is a vector. Velocity is a vector. So that's important. So let's say that it's right here, v1. And then a little bit later, it's right here. I'm going to draw it farther away, even though I am I imagine that delta t is really small. I'm going to draw it really big. Uh, just so we can see things. So remember, this is a small angle, I'm drawing it big. So here's V2. It should be the same length as that, but in a different direction, right? So the velocity is always tangent to the curve as it moves around here, but since it's moving at a constant speed, V2 and V1 have the same length. Now, if I wanna find delta V, I just find the vector difference between these two vectors, V1 and V2. So let's do that. So if I draw V1 right here, I'm going to redraw it. To find the difference, I put the, I put the, start them at the same spot. So there's V1. There's V2. Uh, this is the angle. I'm going to call that delta theta. It doesn't really matter at this point right yet. V2. Then V2 minus V1 is going to be the vector from the end of V1 to the end of V2. So it looks like this. And that's delta V. So that's important because my phone wanted to use the camera. Um, that's important because the acceleration, the direction of the acceleration is the direction of delta V. So that means that if delta V, if I'm just gonna take halfway in between here, is this way, that's the direction of the acceleration. So this gives us the centripe, centripetal part of the acceleration, that it points towards the center of the circle. I could repeat this anywhere around the circle and it would be pointing still toward the center of the circle. So no matter where you are, the acceleration is directed toward the center of the circle. That's really important, okay? But you can see that just based on the definition of delta V. Um, okay, so next we wanna find the magnitude of this acceleration. So the magnitude of the acceleration, I can write this as the magnitude of the acceleration is gonna be the magnitude of delta V over delta T. Delta T is a scalar, so doesn't have, you have to take the magnitude. <laughs> now, I can't take del delta magnitude of V, because that's obviously zero. The magnitude of the velocity doesn't change. But I want to find the magnitude of that vector right there. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm actually going to draw two triangles. I'm going to redraw this triangle, and I'm going to draw this triangle. And it's not a triangle, it's an arc length, but it's, it's almost a triangle. So let's redraw that one. So it looks like this. So this is delta theta, and that's r, and that's also r. And so this is the arc length. I'm going to call that delta s. And so, yeah, you can imagine that that's actually curved, but remember, I said delta theta was really small. So it's, it's, mostly, it's mostly fine. Now if I redraw this one, I have this. Here's v1. Here's v2. I'm going to try to draw it the same as that. That's also delta theta, right? Because as delta theta gets smaller and smaller and smaller, v1 and v2 get closer and closer together. So this is V1, or just V, right? It's the magnitude, V, and then this is the arc length. And we'll call that delta V. So these are similar triangles, right? They have the same angle, and they both have uh, equal sides. So let me get an expression for delta S, the arc length of a segment. I can write delta S equals R delta theta. Right, so if I, if I have delta theta in radians and I multiply them by the radius, I get that arc length. And that arc length is the same as the straight line if delta theta is really small. 
Now I can say delta V over V should be proportional to delta S over R. So I can say delta V over V equals delta S over R. Now if I put in this for delta S, I get R delta theta over R. Oh, look, the R's cancel. If I solve for delta V, I get delta V equals V delta theta. And that's the magnitude of the change in velocity. That's kind of a big deal uh, because now I can put that in up here. So let's just write that. A is delta V over delta T and delta V equals V delta theta. So if I put that in over here, I get A, this is AC, it's going to be V delta theta over delta T. Now this we actually define, this is the rate of change of the angle. So we can define omega as delta theta delta T. It's the rate of change, uh, it's the angular velocity, the rate of change of the angle. Uh, now remember I said delta S is R delta theta. If I solve that for delta theta, delta theta is delta S over R. Now if I plug that in up here, I get omega equals delta S over delta T, one over R. Or, but delta S over delta T, that's a distance over time. That's how far it went. That's, that's actually the velocity. So this is V over R. And which you may have already had this uh, omega equals V over R. That's an, a Greek letter omega. But there you have it again. So now I have AC is V omega, but then omega is V over R. So it's going to be, look at it, V squared over R. Boom. That's your centripetal acceleration, and I got the direction. Now, sometimes it's more useful to write this uh, by substituting uh, v as v equals omega times r if I multiply both sides by that and I get uh, ac equals omega r times omega or omega squared r and that has the same units right because this is radians per second squared uh, radians squared per second squared or one over second squared times meters so you get meters per second squared they're both the same so there you go that's an algebra based derivation of the acceleration of an object moving in a circle at a constant speed, centripetal acceleration.